beautiful classic Kia. Well, this this is a 1955 Chevrolet, one of several cars used in the movie Two Lane Blacktop that came out and uh, was released in 1971. The movie starred James Taylor and Dennis Wilson as the driver mechanic of the car, and then uh, Warren Oates and Lori Bird were the other two main actors. And uh, the storyline was that that Dennis Wilson and James Taylor. Uh, raced this car against other people street racing for money to pay for living their living expenses and uh, Whatever they wanted to do fix up the car and they picked up a hitchhiker uh, Lori Bird and they they met up with Warren Oates driving a GTO and challenged him to racing across the United States Wow! so the, the story is is several days uh, worth a snapshot of their life and much of the movie is shot uh, involving the car both inside the car as well as the outside of the car uh, and uh, the movie is an iconic movie among among many car guys because uh, the car is just so fantastic and the movie really centered around the car as well that's amazing I have not seen that movie but I know that my viewers would have so they're going to enjoy this car right here. We're going to go look at the car, we're going to explore it, have a look at the engine. Before we get into it, the movie was made in 1971. The movie was released, I think they filmed it in the fall of 1970. So at that time, and from then until now, how original is the car? Has it, how much has it been touched or has it not been touched at all? Well, the, the body panels on the car are are uh, mostly original. They were modified a couple times by some of the owners before, but for the most part, the original. The engine and transmission are not original to the car, but they're the original type to the car. The rear suspension is original to the car. Uh, the, the car has been repainted a couple times. Now it's back to the way it was when it was featured in the movie. Uh, the interior is again back to the way it was featured in the movie. So but there's been no major changes to, to the car so what i'm understanding like i mentioned i haven't seen the movie but the 55 chevy when it was launched it was the hot rod it was the racing one that they had uh, chevrolet. correct so a 1955 chevrolet came out with a brand new motor the small Ford block Ford chevy Ford. That's yes right. and that just revolutionized revolutionized hot rodding because it was a very lightweight powerful and very inexpensive and it just became extremely popular and the 55 Chevy with the clean lines to it was, it was an immediate success. It was and even till today the 55 Chevy is a very very popular off the tri -tide. It is yes I mean different people love different years 55, 56, 57 they're they're all they're all beautiful cars personally I like I like the 55 the best uh, but they're all, they're all beautiful cars. I, I love them all, yeah. So do you think the movie was, um, they, they focused on the 51 because it was the first car to bring out the small block V8? Pardon, what was that again? The movie focused on having this particular car as the main focus of it because it was the first that introduced the small block V8. Well, th this car was, was the brainchild of a hot rod builder named Richard Ruth. And Richard Ruth, really he, he, he gets all the credit for this car the movie producer and director really had very little or no idea really what car to put in this movie so they kind of left it up to the hot rod build, builder that they contracted with to design come up with the car that a street racer would build to go racing and win so richard ruth had a history of building hot rods being in the street racing scene and knew exactly the type of car that would be perfect for this movie. Uh, the car that, that many hot rodders would dream of owning. And, yep. and Richard Ruth said, basically, he used the money, the studio money to build his dream car. So he built this car uh, as if he himself was, gonna, gonna go, was going to go street racing, seriously street racing. <laughs> so tell me, seriously street racing, what are we talking about here under the hood? Well, this was this is a big block Chevy. The movie car had 454 cubic inches. This one has uh, been modified to 496 cubic inches. 
it's a tunnel ram intake uh, where the carburetors sit real high two four barrel carburetors and the velocity of the air and fuel running down into the engine is has like a ram effect which is why they call it a tunnel ram and gives a little bit more horsepower at higher rpms then it has exhaust headers which are these white tubes below that take the exhaust gas out of the engine very efficiently making room for new fresh air and gasoline charge in the cylinder again making more horsepower but in 55 this would not have been possible uh this engine was not available in 1955 no. so this engine came out in 1965 this basic engine yeah. so but this was 1970 yes. and a hot rodder would buy a, a older chevy that was very cheap 150 dollars and then put spend the money and put modern racing engine parts in it to make it very fast oh that's amazing yeah. and i bet a lot of people are stopping by to have a look at the car from the movie and it, this is the paint as well that it was in the movie as yeah, well. Yeah, so it, it's, 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 it's primer. Yeah. So this is paint that's used as uh, an in-between coat between your the shiny paint and the metal. So primer paint grips to steel really well, and then the shiny paint grips to this real well. So when you paint a car, you often paint it with primer first before you put the top coat on. And because this is inexpensive paint. Uh, a lot of people with race cars put their money in making their car go faster and then and, and instead of putting a lot of money to make it look nice, they put that money in making the car go faster. <laughs> so they left the car in primer because it, it didn't enough. matter. It didn't yeah. matter. We've got the drag racing happening right next to us. So I did get a bit of footage I'll show you, but it's amazing. I love that sound. Yeah. But that's awesome. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. I thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice meeting you. Good luck. You. Have a great day. Well, this is back in the day. Special, so. Back in the day, years ago, the uh, this is the kind of cars you raced. Yeah. There was a regular kind of car you would buy and drive to the grocery store, and so there were certain classes you ran uh, these in, and they're very, very popular. And uh, we race all the big races, and uh, we happened to have this car, and it was uh, the engine was prepared by Bill Grumpy Jenkins who was the, the top renowned chubby guy in the United States, in the world maybe. And we were lucky enough to get the car and the engine prepared by him. Mm -hmm. And we raced it all the national races and we never got beat for class. And when did you get this car? 67. 67, so you've had it for a while. Yeah, well, no, this is a recreation. Okay. That's what they do now. You know, like like what people fix up an old '65 yep. Mustang. Well, yep. they fix up an old race car. I was just talking to Dave before, and he was telling me about the movie Two Lane Blacktop. Yeah. But what was your role? Well, in that what movie? it was, we got hired. All movies had technical uh, technical advisors, right? So we got hired to be the technical advisors at Two Lane Blacktop. Okay, and so you were, you were a mechanic? You so were a mechanic there on no, set? No, I, I wasn't. Yeah. They hired my brother. And my mm -hmm. brother was the man he ended up being in charge of. I'll show you the coach over and show you. He was in charge of all the cars, period. For the movie. And he was in charge of fixing them, driving them, everything you do. And he was the only one that drove the car in the movie. Wow, and how how did your brother know that? How did he get into the art? Well, we were racing, drag racing, and okay. I'll tell you a little story. We were drag racing, and somebody we had our race car, this race car, and this race car, and we went to Phoenix, Arizona, 1970, for the winter race. And at the winter race, we were there, and back then, I might as well tell you, when you're at the track, 
the end of the day, you put your car back on the trail and took it back to the hotel. So you're in a hotel and you'd be out there at nighttime working on your car. So we're working on the car and people stop by. Wow, this is a cool car and all that, you know. And you want a beer all that? <laughs> so some people stop by, and some people stop by, and they happen to be Universal Studios, as in the Universal yes. Studios, that were making a movie in that town yeah. about something. So yeah. they were making the movie. So they said, well, we're, you know, so they were cool because they were from Southern California, they knew about cars, you know. So we're doing that some Sunday we're at the racetrack. And this is the final deal, right? This is the final deal. We're, we're two country boys from Hicks, from a little town in Maryland, right? Yeah. So we're out there Sunday at the racetrack. Well, come on the loudspeaker. Universal Studios just showed up <laughs> to make a documentary about the Wheatley brothers. Wow. Well, so... What? And we look at the gate. Yeah. And there's this 50 foot semi truck. This is 50 years ago. You yes. didn't have big semi truck. Yep. A Universal studio here, right? And they're sitting at the gate. And, uh, and so the guy told me they were done filming and they were getting ready to go back to California. And they said, wow, we can go to the races, right? So they pulled up there and we were the only people they knew. So they told them they were going to make a movie, a feature film about us. So they got 14 or 15 guys in for free. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we could get 15 guys in for free. <laughs> and we were the only name they knew, right? So end up, we win the race. Oh, wow. We win the whole cotton picking thing, right? Yeah. So then they say to us, well, tell you what, where are you going? They say, well, the next race we're going to is in Pomona, California in two weeks. Another race in Orange County, California. Do is stop by the office. We want to talk to you. Just like that. Just like that. So we go out there, and I'm so dumb and stupid. <laughs> we didn't even go by there, and we waited a week. I said, "Well, oh, it was a week later. We better go. We better go and check this go out. Check this out. Wow. So we take the truck. Here's the race truck. We got this truck with no cars on it, right? And we roll in there, Universal Studios. You've seen the, you've seen it on TV yes. with that big gate. People keep yeah. walking. It could be a stagecoach going in there. It could be a, and we're going in there with a race truck. Right? Wow. And we roll in there, and we said we're supposed to see. It was Floyd Mutrick, so it don't matter. We're supposed to see uh, somebody important. Okay, okay. So we walk in there. And you sit down and wait. Okay. So we go to an office and go in there and wait. So we walk into the office and, and he said, well, mister, we see you, right? So the girl, she said, the girl, all the girls in there were pretty as you are, because they're like, if you're working in the office, you're trying to be an actress and you're working in the office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you get to be an actress, right? Yeah. So these pretty girls and Mr. So on the see you. So we walk back into the boss's office at Universal Studios, yep. whichever. He's standing there in jeans and a pair of sandals playing a pinball machine. Oh, goodness. In his office. And then we sit down and interview The 60s. We sit down and interview this and end up a few months later he called up and said he hired us to do it. Let's do it. Yeah. I love that. Because I did. The, well, I, I'll tell you the answer to the stuff I was giving. Well, what do you want to hear, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. That that was that was fantastic. Come tell me more about your um, 5070. But the car. You want to go on the other side of the sun? Yeah. This has been restored back to replicate exactly. This is as exactly as we can possibly get it. Okay. Even now, we call up and have people to take a computer and make little stickers. You know that you can't go see that's got like 68 yeah you have and how long did it take to get this uh, into the look it has been today you what now how long did it take to restore it back oh the look? It, it's not a not that long because it's 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 a hobby thing a part-time mm -hmm. and your buddy's helping you and you do it at night a few hours and, yep and, you know and like i say the uh the man uh that built the 
built it is here, Greyhound. And uh, we ended up selling it to a man named uh, Billy Towers. Originally bought it, it was a man that was a fan from back in the day. And so he wanted, he saw it, he said, I remember that and I want it. That's awesome. So, because uh, he was wonderful. a fan of uh, my brother. My brother was a driving force. He was the man that knew how to do it, knew how to make yep. them go fast, he knew how to drive them. The, like the stunt drivers? No, I mean the drag race driving. Yeah. But he did the driving in the movie. In the movie, he did the driving. Yeah, but yeah. there wasn't really any stunts. It was just a couple times. Like okay. 120 mile an hour or something. Yeah. You know, like that. And out of the blue, you know. That's, I mean, we were out there run our race cars and run one for somebody else. And, and next thing you know, you're in Hollywood. Next thing you're in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we live in a town with 12,000 people. Yep. Well, that's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Damn. But I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, it's beautiful and I'm, that, I'm sure it's got I a lot of nice I hope you put it memories. on YouTube, right? Oh, it will be. Ah! It will be. Okay. <laughs> How do I find it? I'm going to show you now. Okay.